This is Daily Armenia, Civilnet's Daily News Digest. Here are today's top stories from Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region. Armenian Prime Minister Nikol Pashinyan and Azerbaijani President Ilham Aliyev held their latest round of talks over the weekend in Brussels. European Council President Charles Michel characterized Saturday's summit as frank, honest, and substantive, but made no indication the two leaders had made any concrete progress toward a deal. Michel said Pashinyan and Aliyev had only reconfirmed their commitment to resolving a host of issues, from mutual recognition of territorial integrity and border delimitation to reopening regional transport links and exchanging detainees. There has been a significant uptick in diplomacy in the region since May, with senior officials from Armenia and Azerbaijan meeting for talks in Brussels, Moscow, Washington, and Chisinau, Moldova. Those negotiations all ended in no discernible progress toward peace. Since the 2020 Nagorno-Karabakh War, the European Union has taken on a substantially more active role in the region, alongside longtime mediators Russia and the United States. Following the negotiations, Michel said he invited Pashinyan and Aliyev to a follow-up meeting in Brussels after the summer, as well as to a summit with French President Emmanuel Macron and German Chancellor Olaf Scholz in Spain in October. It was not immediately clear if Pashinyan and Aliyev accepted those invitations. For more information, you can find our full wrap-up of the summit on civilnet.am. As Pashinyan and Aliyev gathered in Brussels, Russia's foreign ministry issued a statement calling for a peace treaty between Baku and Yerevan to start being prepared immediately, citing the humanitarian crisis unfolding in Nagorno-Karabakh. To that end, Russia urged Azerbaijan to lift its blockade of the region, which has now stretched beyond seven months and has led to severe shortages of food, energy, medicine, and other essentials. In an apparent dig at Pashinyan, the ministry said Pashinyan's proposal to recognize Azerbaijan's claims to Nagorno-Karabakh has radically altered the fundamental conditions under which the 2020 ceasefire was signed, as well as the position of the Russian peacekeeping contingent deployed to the region. Yerevan has so far not commented publicly on the matter, but Baku has. In a rare rebuttal, Azerbaijan's foreign ministry said the statement contradicts the Declaration on Allied Cooperation signed by Aliyev and Russian President Vladimir Putin just days before Russia's full-scale invasion of Ukraine last year. Statements on the alleged humanitarian crisis in the region are baseless, the ministry added. Back in Yerevan, the 20th annual Golden Apricot International Film Festival ended Sunday with top prizes going to films from Greece, Iran, and Armenia. In the international competition category, Black Stone by Spiros Jakovides won the grand prize. In the regional panorama competition, Endless Borders by Abbas Amini took top prize. And in the Apricot Stone category for Armenian short films, The Song of Flying Leaves by Armina Anda won the jury vote. At the same time, revelers gathered across Armenia and Nagorno-Karabakh to celebrate the annual Vartavar holiday by drenching family members, friends, and complete strangers from head to toe with buckets of water. One of the most distinctive Armenian holidays, Vartavar has its roots in pre-Christian pagan mythology and is strongly associated with the goddess Astrik. And finally, the civil net number of the day is 1029. That is the number of hotels, hostels, and guest houses in Armenia, according to the latest government figures. So if you want to join the more than 1 million people who have already visited Armenia so far this year, you'll have plenty of places to choose from. And as always, please follow CivilNet for the latest news and independent reporting from Armenia, Nagorno-Karabakh, and the region.